Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm here today with Zach Kinder from NetTech Consulting. Uh, Zach um, and NetTech are a managed service provider that takes security seriously and is implementing a true zero trust approach to protect their clients from malware and ransomware where antivirus is constantly failing to do so. Uh, Zach, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Uh, I think we're going to start here by just showing what it looks like when somebody opens a piece of software that ultimately turns out to be ransomware. And software can run, uh, ransomware can appear in multiple ways. It can run in a Word document that goes off and downloads a piece of malware from the internet. It can be a simple executable that a user downloaded thinking they were updating their Adobe. Or it could even push out in environments like an RMM or like WannaCry did through vulnerabilities in Windows or web browsers. What's important here is it doesn't really matter how the ransomware runs. If it runs in your environment, it's going to be bad. So I think probably the first thing to do with Zach is if we just start off showing somebody what happens when this user thinks they're opening a, a Premier Element or Premier Pro document and it turns out to be really bad. Absolutely. Um, I'd like to also show all our viewers here that the file is clean. So you can see it says test file, please no encrypt me. Um, all our files say this. And the other directory I want to point everyone's attention to is the downloads directory. So we're going to go ahead and run this Premiere Elements. And at this point, things get really, really scary because, I mean, well, in this case, Zach, we've just got test documents and I mean, we can see here that it's made a mess of them. And Absolutely trashed them. Far too often, we're seeing this is real data, real businesses, real in financial customer and important data that's just scrambled by ransomware. Absolutely. And um, now, during this, this test, we were running uh, Threat Locker in a monitor only so we could just see what was happening. Maybe it's worth pulling up the audit there, and Zach, and showing everybody the files being encrypted in the audit. Sure. And we can literally see here that the documents on the desktops being written, deleted, moved by the ransomware. And if we expand on any of those files, we can see the, the process that was actually doing that. Now, of course, we need to stop this. And the best way to stop any software-based threat is don't let the software run at all. If something can't run on your machine, it can't encrypt your files, it can't steal your data. Of course, we can't block all software running, but certainly software like this, ransomware, we want to block uh, from running. Uh, so I, 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 what I'd like to do now is, if it's okay with you, Zach, is just show somebody a scenario where you're using a zero trust approach, you're not letting any untrusted software run and see what happens in the same scenario when you disable monitoring mode and you run the same software. Absolutely. Um, so we're going to come over here and we're going to take this out of monitor only mode. We're going to deploy the policies here. We're going to come back to our virtual machine. We're going to revert it real quick so you can be clean. Like that. So, yeah. so what we see here, we have a zero trust approach applied. And the, obviously, the software can't run. And it's deferred the decision from the unsuspecting user or from the automated process to the IT manager to decide, do I really want to run this Infinity Crypt on my computer? Right. And it, it's, given, uh, it's given us a lot of peace of mind because it's allowed us to be in absolute control over what runs on the endpoints um, in terms of files that people download or run um, or, or anything for that matter. So it's, it's really, really pretty great. Uh, and then another thing I'd like to, to kind of point over to here in the unified audit um, in the item that, that is about to run here, as, as you all can see on our screen, uh, we can check virus total against what we're trying to run here. Um, and as you can see, it's clearly ransomware. Now, now what's interesting about this is that this is, this is obviously bad software and it's being blocked. But what's nice about this zero trust approach is it doesn't matter. I mean, when we see virus total at this point, we're 
what, six months, 12 months, two years on, and this ransomware has been around for some time. But one of the nice things about a zero trust approach is we don't need to worry about, is it known by any antiviruses? Because it's going to be blocked the day, the moment it's released. Uh, the, now, of course, we can't block every application on our computer and even good applications can be weaponized and used against us. We see attackers using PowerShell um, on a regular basis, um, Internet Explorer uh, calling PowerShell through vulnerabilities. We saw just last month uh, on the outbreak of uh, COVID or two months ago on the outbreak of COVID when everybody was rushing home to use Zoom sessions, vulnerabilities in Zoom that allowed attackers to exploit Zoom and potentially weaponize that against you. But one of the other things we can do is when we do allow software that we need to allow to run our business like Zoom, like PowerShell, we can ring fence those applications and we can say, okay, these applications are allowed to run, but we really don't want them to be able to access our data or, or steal our data. And maybe, Zach, if you've got a second, we can just sh show these guys how the ring fencing works in your environment. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's, let's do it. Uh... Then we're going to come over here to our pre-built policy. Remit with ring fence. I also want to show everyone that we've got a storage policy in place that will absolutely protect these folders that we specify. So C users desktops, C users downloads, uh, both those directories will be protected um, no matter what we run. And this is useful because um, let's say that you do have an admin that makes a mistake and goes in and whitelists without, um, you know, knowing exactly what's going on. Um, this, this along with the ring fencing, uh, will stop even, even those mistakes from happening. So now that we've uh, got that turned on and our snapshot's been reverted, let's go ahead and check it out, guys. I want to deploy the policies there. Yeah. Or the red. And it might be worth very quickly looking here at that ring fence policy as well. If you can jump into the application control and the policies again, just sure. to show people what that policy is essentially doing. There's really three states totally. of an application. There's it's blocked, and that's the best state for an application to be in. If it can't run, it can't do any harm. The next state is the permit with a ring fence. The idea here is we can define: can the application talk to other applications? Can it talk to PowerShell? Can it access our files? So if you if you look under the files tab there you'll see um, the, um, the application is restricted from accessing our files. Uh, Zach, if you don't mind clicking on the files tab there. Sure. We can see we've got a policy here. And then even can the application go out to the internet? Can it phone home? Can it get instructions? Can it upload our data to a malicious site? And we can do that on the internet tab as well. Or even if you want to restrict it from changing your registry, you can do that. You can get really granular on how things can be locked down. So now that we've got that policy in place, it's worth seeing what happens when we allow the software to run to our files. Absolutely. So as you can see, the ransomware has clearly been executed. Um, it's now trying to tear its way through the system and our files are not changing. Eventually it gives up and quits. And if, if we look in the audit, we can see that it tried to phone home, it tried to go out to the internet, and it tried to access our data. Both of those were blocked by the ring fencing policies. Absolutely. And I'd like to also show you guys, as you can see, the files are still intact here. Um, nothing's been encrypted. Um, our other executables are still fine. And now we come over here to the unified audit. You can see that it tried to encrypt those files and it seemed to give up after the first file and decided I can't go out. And I think we can even see that it tried to go out to the internet uh, to potentially uh, upload data or extract and get instruction on how to behave. And that was blocked as well. Absolutely. So if we come over here and we filter by ring fence. This was our action just now. And to Danny's point, it, it almost seems like it gave up after it couldn't hit a few, a few files. So, I, I, I'd love to know what it was trying to send home when it gave up. <laughs> It'd be great to see, wouldn't it? 
so um, unfortunately, the attacker didn't get that. Or fortunately, the attacker didn't get that. Uh, get that. Get that message. So uh, Zach's safe, but they're not going to come back after. Fair. Um. So I mean, the the point of this video really was to show people that. Unfortunately, antivirus and EDR is very difficult to keep up with the latest threats. Attackers keep changing the way that software behaves. And unfortunately, not just bad applications are being used, but good applications, remote access tools that are typically used for IT support might be misused and sent out to people to get onto their machines as a, in a phishing scam. You, you, you may see uh, people compromising applications like Zoom and like Microsoft Office, like Internet Explorer. The nice thing about using a zero trust approach is you don't rely on the AV, whether it be through artificial intelligence, heuristical scanning, whatever buzzword we want to use, detecting this threat. You're essentially saying we're in control. We decide what runs in our business. Most people only use a handful of applications by not letting anything else out to execute. You really do harden your environment and you're not hoping that you're going to detect the latest threats. Absolutely. No, the... The ability to block everything by default uh, really has done wonders for our, even our peace of mind, because you can't you can't rely on just the antivirus alone to protect you from these kinds of threats. So thank you very much, Danny. Zach, thank you for being a partner of Threat Locker, and thank you for being a true advocate of zero trust. It's nice to see MSPs out there. They they really do care about their customer security and they're not just trying to bundle some threat detection software and upsell it to their clients. So they're actually doing things to make sure their clients are properly protected. Absolutely. Um, and then this is one last little note that I wanted to throw out here for all your MSPs um, that partner with ThreatLocker. ThreatLocker keeps you visible to your customers because now your customers, when they get the block message, um, they know you're working. So it, it, uh, it really helps keep you present in mind, so. Thank you, Zach.